inside the render settings, so this little clever board, uh, we want to make sure that we're in hardware 2.0 using the renderer. And under common, we also want to change the, the image size. Now for this, I've ha I have said A3 for the projects, but if you're finding that, you know, that your computer's not handling that, um, you know, you can do uh, HD 1080 uh, if you want. That, that'd be fine as well. So um, I'm just going to do the A3. It might take a little bit longer to render, but that's fine. Now, the other thing you can do is you can change it from landscape to portrait by just swapping these uh, numbers around. I'm happy with uh, portrait. By default, it's portrait when you use the preset A3. So I'm happy with that. So once that's done, we have to turn on the resolution gate in our render view window. Uh, so to do that, it's this little icon here. Uh, this one here, I should say, and this is the gate mask. And you can't see it in full uh, unless you press the backspace and right mouse button and drag across your screen and that will show the whole frame of your, your setup. So I've already like, you know, positioned this camera to, to be a nice area, but like, let's say I had a new camera. You could press F to focus in on an object. Maybe I want to focus in on this cake. And then if I turn on the resolution gate again, I can start to frame my scene. And when, when you're framing, you know, your environment you want to make sure you don't sort of like sit objects just on the edge of the border or just outside the edge you want to you know give things a little bit of space you don't want to have a th thing called bad tangents where things are lining up just on each other um meaning the, the borders or something a little bit weird and you can't tell what's in front of, of what. Just uh, take a bit of time to, you know, manipulate all those. And, yeah, we've talked about it a few times, but, yeah, experiment with – so I'm just clicking on the clapperboard and the cog. Experiment with the focal length. So, um, you know, you might want to make it wide angle or – or a zoom lens, make everything sort of flat. I think for this particular one, this angle looks pretty good. So maybe even a hundred. So this is making everything sort of, you know, flat and organized and coming together. And yeah, that looks pretty good. Got sort of even amount of space on each side. So once I'm happy with that, I can lock off the camera camera lock and now if I move I'm not moving anything around um, you may want to turn on a two-sided lighting as well so that you know you don't get sort of so much black in your scene it's a bit hard to tell but like maybe I'll just go to a new view so two-sided lighting just means that uh, the outside doesn't come up as black in the scene, but that's okay. All right. The other thing that um, we want to do is, I don't know if you noticed, but if you create different uh, layers for each object, depending on what color that layer is set at will be depend on the wireframe. So it's a good idea to change the colors of the layers to be the uh, color that you want in the wireframe. So I'll just make all mine black and save that. Um, 
If we want to turn on screen space ambient occlusion, it's this icon here. Like so, and you can see you get those sort of contact shadows appearing. All right. But let's uh, now render this out. Okay, so um, just make sure nothing's selected as well, or else you kind of get the highlighted wireframe. And we'll open up the render view window. So this is just the Maya render view window. And under uh, render, if you go to render, you can pick which camera you want to render from. So I'm going to go render perspective one. And it's, you know, rendering from that view. Is that what I wanted? Oh yeah, I just haven't gotten any ground down the bottom there. But that's okay. Maybe I'll just fix that up. That looks pretty good. I feel like it's just too flat. I'm gonna go back to my other one. Well, I prefer this view. And let's just make sure we're all inside. Yep. So this is perspective camera. I'll go back to the render view and go to render and say perspective. And then it'll, it'll render out the perspective. Okay, so how do we get to see the wireframe? I've already jumped ahead with this scene, but by default, when I render, I'll just take this back to default, presets, import render settings, default settings. Okay, I think that should be right. And so, yep, so it's changed it back to uh, 520, but I'll change that back to A3. And so now if I render this again, this is on the default settings. Okay, so there's no wireframe, there's no ambient occlusion, uh, none of that's turned on. So how do we turn that on in the render settings? Let me just save this image. To save the image, we can click on this icon up the top and it will save it in the as a temp file. And we'll go back to our render settings and now we'll go into hardware 2.0 and if we come down to, um, let's talk about anti-aliasing first. So if we go in here and if you press one to one aspect ratio, this is the size of the image. And you'll notice that there's no anti-aliasing. So the edge looks quite jagged. There's no blurring of the, the pixels to make a smooth line, which happens with the raster image. So let's turn that on first. And you can see that there's no anti-aliasing in the viewport as well. Here you can see we've got a similar sort of non-anti-aliasing uh, edge. To turn the anti-aliasing on, you can turn it on in the viewport here, multi-sample anti-aliasing. And now you can see it's really, really smooth. When you do turn that on, if we go back into the render settings and we render that image again, it will uh, turn, turn that on in the render view as well. So that's with anti-aliasing turned on. I might just save that image as well. Now for the AO, it's the same thing, so I'll turn it on in, in here and it will turn on. Oh, let's try it in the locked window. That's okay, I'll just zoom it out. Yep, everything's looking good. Okay, so I'll render that again. There we go. So yeah, now we've got the AO turned on as well. Um, so both of those settings are accessible 
inside inside the Maya Hardware 2.0 settings. So first one, anti-aliasing is here. Um, and it's a good idea to actually turn on smooth wireframe enabled as well because we want to render out the wireframe. Now, the sample count is set to 8. Just leave it at 8. 16 is likely to crash your computer. Um, I'm not sure why, but uh, that's my experience. So the other thing that we turned on here was the ambient uh, screen space ambient occlusion. So that's turned on. Um, you can change the amount and the radius if you want to, but uh, usually just leaving it on default is fine. So now we just want to be able to change the uh, render settings uh, so to, to make it so we can see the wireframe. So that's under render options. And you'll notice that our render mode is shaded on textured. And if we want wireframe, we can turn on wire on shaded. So once we turn that on, we get a uh, wireframe on shaded. So you can see I've got the floor selected there. So I'll just select a camera, re-render that. And I'll get rid of that green line. And if I click one to one, we can see that it looks really nice. Um, we've got nice anti-aliasing, we've got nice smooth wireframe, um, and we've got the screen space ambient occlusion. I've made everything float, which is not so good. But um, yeah, it's looking good. Just be wary though, like see how when I zoom out that it looks like there's no anti-aliasing on the lines. It all looks jagged and it doesn't look very nice. And that's because this uh, image viewer doesn't resample the lines as you move in and out of the image. Like if you were to open this image uh, in like a different image viewers, they'll resample as you move. So it looks smoother, but for, for this one, it doesn't. So it does, unless you go to one to one ratio, you don't see the smoothness. So once that's all, all looking good, we'll go up to file, save image options, very important. Make sure we turn on color manage image. So it's using this uh, transformation. So that's turned on by default. And then we can save it and we can save it as, you know, wireframe. Uh, I'm just going to call it RO2. And that's it. And you can submit that. So that's hardware 2.0. Um, and it's, you know, it's pretty, pretty quick, pretty straightforward. And it gives you a pretty good, good result.